So I'm not sure if all of you saw the funny meme going around this past week, but uh, I saw one about Jesus's ascension. What did Jesus's ascension signal? He started his work from home status. So there we go. Jesus is working from home just like we are. But thinking about Jesus ascending and going home to God got me thinking about and conjuring up um, images of home. I've told this story before, but a couple of years after we moved to Hanover, I was participating in a workshop for parents at the international school, tr helping train us for raising up third culture kids. And the presenter asked us to think about our image of home. When she asked for responses, most people talked about their spouses or their kids. So I just laughed to myself because my very first image that came to mind was Lake Michigan and the smell of dune grass on a warm summer day. Sorry, family, I love you very much, but it just turns out that Lake Michigan came first. I don't know. There is nothing quite like it, and I can still bring to mind that smell of warm dune grass at a moment's notice. So I wonder what you think about when you think about home. Do you have strong memories or images of what home means to you? Because I found myself wondering, was Jesus actually excited to go home? Do you think he was looking forward to returning to God to sit at the right hand? Do you think he yearned for comforts of heaven? For, for many of us, however, I think this exercise of thinking of home makes us desperately homesick. And we ache painfully within our souls, missing those places that have shaped us into who we are. For some of us in our community, the possibility of returning to our homeland is an impossibility. For some of us, that is a temporary truth, especially in this time of the coronavirus. But for some of us, that is a permanent truth. I think of our friends Maj and Haim from Syria who worship with us every once in a while. What do they imagine home looks like and how do they feel when thinking about their homeland of Syria. So I was also wondering what were the disciples thinking about as they were standing on the Mount of Olives, the Mount of Olivet. I'll invite you to go back and watch that children's message again because I chuckle every time at the beginning. Good times with wordplay. Were the disciples wondering where Jesus was going? Were they perhaps trying to picture what home looked like for Jesus? I imagine actually that they were probably staring in shocked disbelief because I think I would have the same reaction. Imagine watching Jesus, this, this man who you have followed for three years, this man who was crucified and rose again, this one who you thought had been returned to you now rising into the clouds. I think I would stand there thinking, hey, Jesus, where are you going? And then can you imagine sort of lifting up your head and, and shouting into the sky, where are you going? And then two men mysteriously appear dressed in white. Some translations say they were angels. Some commentaries argue that these two men were probably Moses and Elijah, the two men who appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration. But they show up to remind the disciples that Jesus is going to return as mysteriously as he came and, or as mysteriously as he left, excuse me. But I think the hidden message that he was telling the disciples is, don't just stand there, get going. There's work to do. There is life back down in Jerusalem that needs to be shared with other people, this life in Christ. And it's here that I'm reminded that I, I need to give you this big picture. We worship from Sunday to Sunday 
in unique and creative ways these days. But there is a stream that flows through these weeks of uh, Jesus promising us last week that he won't leave us as orphans, this week celebrating Ascension Sunday, and next week we have Pentecost Sunday when the Holy Spirit comes in powerful ways. There is a movement here. And the reason why I want to give you that big picture is because Perhaps the disciples on this very moment felt like they were abandoned by Christ. We have the benefit of hindsight in being able to see this trajectory. For next week, we know that we are given the counselor, the spirit that guides us and empowers us in our life of Christ. And the reason why I give you this big picture is because our images of home conjure up feelings and emotions within us. Perhaps some of you feel comforted, joyful, you can smell the good smells, you can remember the warm relationships. For some of you, maybe you are trying to build a sense of home that is more safe and secure than the one that you were brought up in. But the reason why I ask you is because there's this sense of home that brings us life. And so I want to share with you one thing that I learned this week. I often say it, but this is what I love about being a practicing Christian is the fact that I don't have the answers all the time. I'm continually learning new things. And I learned something new this past week. I was reading about this eternal life that Jesus talks about in our gospel passage and came across this description of eternal life I hadn't absorbed before. I think we're familiar with the part of John chapter 3 where it says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. I think our cultural assumption is that Eternal life is up in the clouds where Jesus went. Eternal life means we're dwelling in these heavenly realms, um, floating on the clouds. I always had this picture of uh, what heaven was like as a child where you're sort of bouncing on top of the clouds from here to there. And then as you grow older and you discover that clouds are just water, water molecules, and that if you tried to step on it, you would just fall through. That sort of ruins the understanding of eternal life in heaven. In actuality, there is a much more powerful and tangible definition of eternal life. The main meaning of the word in Greek means the quality of life, not the duration. And that is a powerful image because, let's be honest, a miserable life but one that is eternal would simply be miserable for a long, long time. Eternal life in our passage from John is nothing more than the life of God. To possess eternal life or to enter into this eternal life is to experience here and now something of the splendor and the majesty and the joy and the peace and the holiness which are the characteristics of the life of God. When you seek God and know God, this, these feelings of, of splendor, of peace, of gratitude, all of these things that we might conjure up when we think about home, these are the things that are found in God. And this is what eternal life means for us. I think some of us either come from traditions where we have sort of a dispensational understanding. We're going to be picked up and carried away off to the heavenly realms. But what I believe and what I think is more faithful to scripture is that God created earth and found it good and set us here on this earth at a specific time to dwell here with this eternal life, with this tangible and embodied eternal life that God promises us. These characteristics of, of goodness, of joy, of peace. So I invite you as you imagine Jesus going home or our images of home 
imagine that that's the eternal life that God wants us to embody as followers of Christ today. So as you embody these characteristics of God, I have one challenge for you. Pretty simple. Well, maybe not in execution, but one challenge for us as a community this week. In our passage from Acts, Jesus told the disciples that they would be witnesses to Jesus in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In order to understand that charge given by Christ, they gathered once again into the upper room after returning to Jerusalem, and scripture says they devoted themselves to prayer. Friends, I would like to give us a week-long challenge. In seven days, we will celebrate Pentecost, the day when we celebrate this Holy Spirit coming upon humanity in powerful ways. I would like us to devote ourselves to prayer for the next seven days. If you need assistance in your prayer life, you will be able to find some prayer prompts on our Relish Facebook page each day for the next week. The reason why I want us to devote ourselves to prayer is because when this Holy Spirit comes on the followers of Christ on Pentecost, they are empowered and emboldened to be witnesses for Jesus to the very ends of the earth. And it's my belief that as we celebrate our fifth anniversary of Relish, we need a blessing and direction for our community. Jesus said that we would be witnesses to the far ends of the earth. And I believe that in unique ways, the world has actually gathered here in Hanover. Our mission, we don't have to travel very far. We can just walk around the city and the world is here. But we have to work in creative and inspired ways in order to reach that world here in Hanover for Christ. So I'm wondering, will you devote yourselves to prayer this week, seven days from this Sunday to Pentecost Sunday next week? Not only prayer for your families, for your community, but also and especially for the community of Relish so that we might be inspired and devoted to the mission that Jesus has called us on. Because I believe for each of us, we will embody these gifts in unique ways. Are there ways we can be hospitable? Are there ways that we can be working for this sense of home being given to all people around the world? There are so many displaced people at the moment. I'm wondering, how can we as a church body work to make safe homes for all of those who are stranded in refugee camps or at borders. And I'm wondering, especially for those who are students from places around the world, in what ways can we as a community make a safe place for them to dwell while they're here in Hanover? So friends, you have one task this week, to pray each day, seven days, and let's see what God inspires us to do where God leads us on paths of righteousness for his name's sake here in the city of Hanover. And in praying, I trust and know that the Holy Spirit will inspire us and we will dwell in a safe and homely place because of what God has given to us. Pray with me, please. Jesus, we're like your disciples sometimes. We're just stuck standing and staring, wondering where the heck you went. But we know that you have given us the Holy Spirit to abide with us and inspire us. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint us to feel at home in who we are when we are close to you. And I pray that you will guide us in our prayers this week and that you will call the community of Relish in in fresh and new ways as we enter into a new year of life together as a community. We lift these prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen.